Our folks got us a 2007, not a Hyundai, a Toyota. It's the Sienna, looks like the big 3.3. Super, super long extended crank uh, to the point where I don't want to crank it for you guys right now because the starter should probably be glowing red. I mean, you crank and crank and crank and crank and crank and crank and then bang, it starts. The guy looked at it himself, said he had a cam sensor code. He said he put a cam sensor in it or swapped the cam sensor around with a new one that he had and never resolved the issue. Uh, so he just brought it here, thinks there might be something wrong with the wiring. So that's what we're going to find out. We're going to plug in the Altel. We'll be using the, uh, well, the, the MS906 Pro, they call this one. Uh, our other one is up inside that Hyundai that we're working on. We just did a video on there with the alternator. We're in the process of waiting on parts. So let's do that. I see a cam sensor here and it looks like a cam sensor back here. I see just two of them. Um, that's all I see right off. Neither one of them look new. So hopefully he was changing the right part. Um, but let's uh, let's get plugged into it, see what we see. I will show you a little bit how it cranks. I just want the starter to cool down a little bit, but yeah, and we'll, we'll throw a uh, battery maintainer on it also. We're just gonna let it do a, uh, come on fella. We'll let it do a full system scan here. Got the bin all decoded. Okay, looks like three codes so far in the engine computer. That's all we're really kind of worried about. But he told me on his note that he left it was a P0340, which would be a cam sensor code. And, I, and I've heard these, you know, I've seen cars with you know, these cam sensor failures that have extended cranks, but this thing was really excessive to the point I was just about ready to give up and push it in because the crank had slow hard out. There she goes, she's coming to life. We'll just put it up in power supply mode because we have the key on. It's almost done finished scanning here. It's 70%, we'll let that finish, see what she says. So he's right, current pending and history code P0340. I say we look up the code set criteria, see which cam center is talking about first and foremost, and then see what we can do to fix it. Looking at service state, I didn't, I didn't see these right off. So these are the exhaust cam sensors here in the middle of the valve cover. So you got exhaust cam, intake cam. Uh, yeah, exhaust cam, intake cam sensor on each bank. The other one's under the intake in the back. Fortunately for us, it is the intake cam. It's having a problem with it. says bank one and my little bit of research, it should be this one back here in the corner. And it, you know, basically states that, you know, any fault essentially with the cam sensor and or the cam timing. So if this thing, if the timing is off, evidently it will also set the same code. So perhaps that's why he didn't have, you know, good success swapping the sensor. Either A, there's a wiring problem or B, you know, it could have, you know, poor cam timing. Now I only started it and just kind of idled it inside. You know, I didn't drive it, so I don't know if there's, you know, cam timing issues there. I see it does have a new cam solenoid, at least on this head. So what I would say we should do, I got the Pico out here, you guys see me getting that out. Let's just, for grins and giggles, let's see this one here evidently is working. The bank two, what they call it. And then the bank one back there, sensor A, is what they're having an issue with. So I say, you know, let's grab our known good, or one that should be good, and then we'll probe into that one and see what's coming out of that. And if, um, you know, if they both look good, then we're gonna be, then we're gonna have to grab the crank signal to see if everything is in sync. Good thing about Toyota service data is they give you a known good waveform to a certain degree, I mean, um, so anyhow, let's do it that way. Alrighty, hopefully our screen record is working. The one on this laptop is kind of a crappy one. Uh, but let's see, so our bank two, we can see this here. Our VV, VV2 plus is purple, which that matches there. And our five volt is yellow. So, and I've got our battery, or our negative side of our scope here just hooked to battery negative. I set it up at 10 volts, 500 milliseconds on the screen. We're gonna use channel two, which is red. Let's just see, well, I guess first of all, we can just unplug this, see if we have our five volts. Oh, got some kind of goo in here. All right, so it looks like we have our five volts present. This connector is not in great shape here. I see the wires are kind of crumbling apart on the back. I'm back probed into the purple now. So we do have five volts there. Let's see if that pulls the ground. No, it pulls it down a little bit. Uh, let me uh, take him back up a page here. Yeah, it was at five volts when I plugged it in. Dropped it down to four volts, okay. Interesting, we'll just keep that running. 
And then our blue trace here, we're gonna go back into bank one, which we gotta see what our wire colors are there. Uh, bank one, intake, our five volt is yellow, and our cam signal should be black with white. And it's true, we got a yellow and we have a black and white. Let's just take do the same thing here. We're gonna unplug this one. Pop back onto our scope. Let's see if our yellow has five volts. Get a light here so I can see what I'm doing. It has our yellow and it appears to have five volts. This is our black with white. That's our signal wire and that appears to have five volts. So let's back probe the black with white. Okay, let's see what happens when we plug it in. Depending on where we're at on the cam, it may just disappear. All right, so it looks like they're both running about the same voltage. We do have a little noise on there, probably from the, uh, yeah, a little bit of that noise, that static noise on there is from the battery maintainer. So we'll leave that off for a moment. Let's put some more time on our screen. All right, I'm gonna go crank it over. So that's interesting, it started right up. I'm gonna pause that. When I went to pull this sucker in, I had to crank the living snot out of it. Let's uh, enhance. Uh, well, let me uh, let me unenhance <laughs> and get a little taller screen here. Enhance. So there is our red trace, and we see no blue trace. All right, so that's interesting. Um, our red trace is channel two, right? So it's this one here. This is the one we know that was working, or at least it's one that doesn't have a code set against it. And then our trace back here is our suspect uh, faulty one. Let me uh, take and flick the key back on here, folks. All right, so key back on. So that's pretty interesting. All right, let me just uh, unenhance. Let's take and set some time back here. Now we see our red trace is, is pulled down. If I unplug that, that should come back up. Because like I said, it depends on where it's at on the cam. Okay, so that's back up. That's back down. So this is this is kind of interesting. Let me take and unplug this cam sensor here. Cam sensor is unplugged. It is at zero. Oh, okay, they're not lining up because like a ding dong, I moved our trace here. There we go. Now we're back to where we should be. So this is unplugged key on. I want to make darn sure I didn't lose our back probe here. Well, that was running, so I'm gonna make sure. We're gonna capture it just one more time. I just wanna be darn tooting. Okay, we are probed in there. Let me take and fire this up one more time just to be definitive. All right, now we're cranking, baby. Okay, let's pause that. So that's kind of what it did the first time. I mean, you have to do it a whole bunch. Let's come back here. Of course, we're going to have a ton of, ton of noise, but it's quite, it's quite evident that our cam signal is not functioning on that rear bank. So, so, so buttons on my underwear. Um, he said that he already swapped it with one that's inside the car, which I do see one in there. We could put a filter on this and clean this all up but I don't think it's gonna be, I don't think it's gonna be necessary. Okay, we can, we can kind of see through. I think they use a 60, 90 and a 120, something like that, I can't remember. It's all in service data, as far as the three different teeth on the cam sensor. I guess it's neither here nor there when we don't have a signal altogether. So um, let's make sure that we're maintaining our five volts, our ground, and then our signal wire, and then, then we may have to pull it out to see if the teeth are physically moving. 
which is a possibility. I don't know what type of reluctor wheel they use on there, but that's also a possibility. All right, so I believe I just added a third channel. I took the one that was, you know, that we had up here in bank two, stuck it back on the five volt reference. So our blue trace, well, let's see, let's pull up the Pico here. Our blue trace should be still the cam signal. Our red trace should be the five volts and our green trace here should be the ground. So what do we expect to see? Well, we expect to see a lot of noise. Um, I, I did put a filter on it. So when we, once it's recording and we, and we pause it and go back, it should clean up the signal for us um, a lot. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, at least to make it look a little uh, more appeasing to the eye. Um, so we expect our green trace to say, stay at or near ground. And we expect our red trace here to stay at or near five volts, which is where it should be now, which it is. And then our cam signal, which we know we don't have, well, we expect that to stay really at nothing. So we'll put some time on the screen. Let's go crank this little fella over. It's gonna look like a lot of noise here on the screen. I'm gonna let that finish filling its buffer and then, actually I think we can pause it and I think it'll clean up our signal here. Might take it a second. Okay, it does. All right, so what do we see? Well, we see that our five volt stayed, our ground didn't elevate and we still have no cam signal. So we've narrowed this down very quickly. Um, it's not a wiring issue because we didn't lose anything. We have everything there. Now this noise is, well, we're cranking the engine over. There's gonna be a tremendous amount of noise. We have a battery maintainer on it, plus we're cranking the engine, so don't worry about all this. I'm looking for, uh, you know, big, big errors here. Macro, not micro, I don't know, whichever. You know, I'm looking for the ground to disappear, to become elevated, the five volt to drop out, which neither one of those, none of that's happening. So step two, now that we're this far, pull the cam sensor out, have an assistant, a very lovely one if we could, crank it over and see what the trigger wheel looks like. Is it rotating? If it is, then we simply have a bad cam sensor. So I'm just doing a pin drag test. I wanna see what a good one feels like. And then, cause we know there's nothing wrong with this front one, then I've got the back one unplugged. And I just want to make sure our pins feel good. And they do. They've got what I would consider decent pin tension, or at least very similar to the front one. I'm going to grab a 10 millimeter. We're going to take that bolt out. And I guess if everything looks good, we could always do the one, two swap a roo here and see. You know, obviously the problem should, you know, transfer to the back there. A little 10 mil here. I can't tell if these bolts have been out. Yeah, it doesn't really leave much of a mark on them. But the customer did tell me he took his new cam sensor and swapped it all around with all of them. And never resolved the issue. But perhaps his new one is junk. Because we know what new stands for, never ever worked. There's that baby, one long-winded bolt. Take a wiggle this sucker up out of there, maybe. Come on, baby. Oh, there she is. So there's our cam sensor. It is a Denso. It appears to be an OG. The original gangsta. And then, trigger wheel. Don't really know what it's supposed to look like. I guess what we can do for comparison sakes, because this is not something I would have committed to memory, was we'll just remove this one. So we can see what this one, in case we're missing like a big old chunk back there and we don't even know it. Pull this little fella out. I assume the trigger wheels will look the same. Uh huh. Okay. We could bar the engine over by hand, I suppose. Or we could just have 
me see if I know Mrs. O is busy. Let me see if I can get my boy Josh to come help. Let's see here. Okay, go ahead and crank it, Josh. Okay. All right, so it did start. Let's see if we can. Okay, uh, go ahead and crank it. Yeah. Okay, shut the key off. There you go. All right, I know you guys couldn't see in there, but I could see the trigger wheel spin around. It's more like a small blade in there that spins around. That's good, Josh. Thank you. Well, with our newfound data, here's what I say. One, two, swap or roo. We're going to put this one in the back. We're going to put the one that was in the back in the front. Make sure it is seated down in there all the way. Because that's the other thing. You know, the air gap could affect the performance of the sensor like this. This should generate a different code. I see when I tighten this one down, it does kind of tweak up a little bit, so that gives me a little bit of concern. Yeah, if I hold it down, it's fine. When I tighten it, it kind of tweaks it up a little bit. I'm curious to know if this one does the same thing. I don't know how sensitive to air gap they are. I don't see a lot of corrosion around the hole back here. I'll be curious to know if when I tighten this one up, what happens. Come on, baby. I'm gonna have to put a little, a little bit of lube on that one. We will use the official Toyota rubber grease. Get that a little smear. Let's see if we can get her in there now. Talk nice to her. Come on, baby. No sir, she doesn't want to go down there all the way. Well, what in the thunder? It should be the same exact sensor. Let me get a pair of needle nose. Maybe I just can't quite get it. Push down straight on it here. Grab it on the outside of the connector. The O-ring might be a little bit swole. Spending too much time at the gym. Let's see if we can. Come on, baby. it's fully seated. I hate using that word. Okay, let's see. It appears to be in all of the way. I'm going to shine a mirror back there and make sure it is sitting flush in the valve cover. There's that. Yeah, see when I tighten this one, I don't see it tweak up and down like this one does. Let me grab a mirror, shine it, shine it back there. I don't think you really shine a mirror. Reflect on that thought a little bit, will ya? Let's have a little gander. Oh, she's flush. She is flush, all spades, baby. Um, let's uh, just hook our scope back up to it, I guess. Let's get everything rerunning here. We will, let's see, I think purple. Well, here, we had the red trace originally on bank two. So let's do our red trace on bank two, which was the purple wire here. All right. We got no voltage because my guy turned the key off. Is that why? Probably. Keys back on. Pardon me for a moment here. Okay, I'm back. Keys on. We're probed into that one. Slightly elevated. About uh, you know, 800 millivolts. I think it runs slightly elevated off from ground, if I remember correctly, because I think service data stated that if it's below 0.3 volts was one of the uh, code set criteria. So yeah, there we are. We're high, we're low. I believe that's the case. So that leads me to believe that it does run slightly elevated. I believe black with white back here was our cam signal. We'll 
take and uh, get that plugged in. We'll make sure we're probed in well. Wait for it to refresh the screen. I guess we don't need the green trace here. Oops, come on fella. Turn that off. Make sure we're probed in good. Our blue trace is the bank one. That's our uh, one that we just swapped. That's the one that was up here. What I'm expecting to see based on what we've already seen is that our blue trace will work now and our red trace won't. That's my, that's my thoughts and my hopes and my dreams here. So we'll let our screen refresh here in a moment and then we'll get her cranking. good on this little screen right here but let's back it up let that load up here and the survey says says that everything's working now hunky freaking dory did we have a clearance issue is what I'm curious of well my laptop's being ridiculously slow today for some reason um, yeah, I'm starting to wonder if we had some air gap issues here. Well, that don't look right. <laughs> so here, look at this. Okay, good thing we enhanced. Enhanced. Because now, hopefully we're following along here, our blue trace is functioning. Our red trace is kind of functioning, but the one that's on our red trace, if you remember correctly, so it's here in the front of the cylinder head, this is the one, this is the sensor that we said, hey, it's NG, no good. We confirmed our original diagnosis, our blue trace here, which is the sensor that was on bank two, which is now on bank one that we verified all the wiring to. Well, we confirmed that that sensor also works. So, you know, by fiddling and, and moving this, now this one here, I did say is tweaked up a little bit. Let me loosen up the bolt in it. I'm gonna kind of push it down here. Actually, let me get a pocket screwdriver to shove underneath it. That'll kind of tweak it enough. I doubt that little tiny bit of air gap changes what's causing our issue, but I'm going to stick a pocket screwdriver under here. Let me try to tighten that down and see if that changes. No, it doesn't. The whole body of this thing's kind of tweaked. I'll tell you what, I'll just hold it down like that. Actually, leaving it loose is better than tightening it down. Let's take and fire it up all of a sudden and see if it miraculously comes to life. Stand by. There, 
just tightened up the bolt in it and you can see what it's doing. So it's pretty definitive. We've tightened it up a little bit more. So yeah, just, just fiddling with the bolt on it. But right now it's tight if I just crack it loose a little bit. Wiggle that sensor. And that just barely cracked loose, folks. The bolt's tight, so yeah, that's it. Show's over. Let me shut her down. I called down to the know-how. They've got one. We won't have it for a little while, though. But So you can see the bolt's tight, but watch this. As far as wiggling it, that's the amount that this thing can wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle. So, which is excessive, you know. Not I'm not talking about the connector here. Let's get the connector out of the picture so you're not seeing that. But just the amount the sensor is seemingly tweaked, for lack of a better term. That's it. So let's take the bolt out. We'll leave it in there so we don't drop anything in the hole accidentally. We'll leave our pico out too because we'll stick the new one in when it shows up. We'll wiggle it. Make sure. It looks the same which it should the rear one we're just going to leave alone that one we know sat flush because well we reflected on it with our mirror we saw that it was who knows what happened to this baby oh never mind we know what happened to this baby <laughs> it's broke you ding dong so possibly i don't know i was going to say possibly some corrosion but i'm thinking that's not the case Well, possibly. I, well, I don't know. It has this metal sleeve in there, and maybe the metal sleeve got corroded and tweaked it, and now the corrosion has fallen out. It's hard to say, but I was just going to show you the crack in it. Of course, I didn't notice it when I first took it out, but you can see the crack in the hold down, which I guess you wouldn't give it much thought, but, you know, it clearly has a little bit of a bow to it. I know we're kind of beating a dead horse here looking at it, but it just goes to show that the sensor itself works it functions it's fine you could do it no parts required take this thing off use a bolt and a big fat washer and just hold it down in there and everybody would be good ivan would be proud you guys would be happy but i've got to stand behind my work and the know-how has a sensor albeit an expensive little sucker we're going to put it in and we're going to sleep well at night knowing that this thing's good and the toyota can get a couple hundred thousand more miles and you know, bob's your uncle I've got another lady that's supposed to be stopping in for something. So pull that baby out. Got a new one here, right from the PRC to the PRNY. That's your classic CSS 9259er. From the know-how. There it is. Looks like the OG. Make sure it's not a Denso. No, it's not. Say so sometimes you gotta watch uh, standard motor products here. It likes to use some OEM stuff. So we'll put a little bit of lube on this baby. That's my other lady. So we'll have to take a break here for a minute. I'm pretty sure yeah it is. Let's just stick this baby in. We're going all the way. It's all the way in. Put the screw on this. And then I'll go help that other lady that's here because Mrs. O to tell us. Mrs. Otis gave us the handoff silently as she's on the phone. That lady's all sorted. That's in. It's plugged in. Uh, I guess we probably don't need to do anything other than just try to start it. If it starts immediately, well, we know we got it. So let's just see. Contact. Good, 247,000 miles on the clock on this little guy. We're gonna grab our scan tool here, which I just had to use for the other lady there. We're gonna go back and we're gonna clear that 340 out. I guess we could back probe it and see if it's, I mean, it's not, it's not wiggly like the other one, so it's probably nonsense. We don't really have to do that. Thankfully, the timing wasn't jumped and it was just something simple. Okay, I don't know why the guy didn't get it when he was Swapping a sensor around. The only thing I could figure is the sensor that he bought is Junkola. So we're going to clear the codes out. We'll start it a couple times and then we'll ship it. 
Adios, muchachos. All right, no code. Fire it up. Got it. Hard to chokey. Let's see what we have. Trouble codes. Shouldn't be any. And it isn't. I'll hit read just in case. Let her redo its thing here. No, no codes. So, okay, everybody's happy. That's it. Show's over. Hope you guys enjoyed it. All right. Everybody is satisfied. At least I hope so. We'll take care of all of our wires now. Wish all this stuff was cordless. That'd be a nice little scope if everything was cordless. Wireless, rather. And that's it, folks. So that was pretty easy to determine what was going on, especially using the Pico when we could actually see what was going on. Um, don't really have anything else to say. Hopefully the screen recorder there was working good on that laptop. And we're able to put that up on your screen. If not, well, the whole video is crap and nobody will ever see it. But if it seems to be a little bit out of sync as far as what you hear and what you see, well, that's because I don't have high-end equipment. There's an excuse for you. Anyhow, I don't want you guys to have an excuse for not going in that comment section. Leaving a question, a comment, a concern that you may have. Tell me how you would have fixed it, not fixed it, or whatever you want to tell me. Tell me anything you want to tell me down there. Tell me all your secrets. And uh, find us around, socials, Insty, Facebook. You guys, oh, that was Insty and Facebook. <laughs> that also means something else, so be careful with that one. And uh, just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.